everybody, I'm Nick, and in this video I'm going to show you how you can fix the incredible overwhelming majority of your database performance issues in .NET. And the way we're going to do it is not only incredibly simple, but it's also ingenious. It's just so, so good. It's going to be so non-invasive and you can drop this into your systems basically immediately. So let me show you what I have here. I have an API that has this user service where we can call the database, in this case a SQL Server, and get a user by an email or by the ID, which is the partition key in this case, so nice and indexed, or have a more inefficient search of doing a partial search on the username. Now, in my database, I opted to seed it with a few data. And in this case, I have one million rows, as you can see over here, because I'm gonna go to the last one, as you can see over here, one million rows, as well as this query over here, so 1 million, and I chose to have a lot of data in it and realistic data because it's probably what you have in production as well, and that's what I have in production too, and I'm using this now, so this is just amazing stuff, and it is going to show you how performance will scale, and this will only get better with more complex store procedures or more complex data that you might have. So I'm going to put this on the side now, and I'm going to show you what this API is doing. So I'm just going to run the API, and here I have a Blazor web page that all it really has is this user service that is calling the API we're running now locally, as well as having this home page that just for now loads a user by their ID and then is just listing that user. So I'm going to go here and just say .NET run, and then I'm going to go on Firefox, I'm going to reload, and as you can see, we have the user. Now, if I load the error page and I refresh and I make this bigger, as you can see over here, this request, the last one, the one that gets the user based on their ID, takes 11 milliseconds, but the more we refresh, the more it's kept warm, and we have now a 3 millisecond, 1 millisecond, 2 millisecond, pretty good performance. But this is a point read. It is going to be pretty fast. So let's see what happens when we change this over here from a simple point read to using a list, let me just stop this web page over here, by using a list of users, using the Nick username, partially searching, and then just returning everything on the web page. So for that, I'm going to go to the terminal, rerun the web UI, and then go on the page, refresh it, and as you can see, we're loading the users, but that took some time. How long? If I refresh, you can see that this takes over here around a second. And it's going to stay there, 900 milliseconds, 895, 879. It's a slow query, and it makes sense. It's loading a lot of data, and it's doing a fairly hard query on the database level itself. So can we just magically reduce that number to just be 2 milliseconds? We can. And that's where the package I'm going to show you today comes in. The package is called Delta, and all you need to do to integrate it is just search for Delta. It's called Delta. It is just Delta, nothing else. Go ahead and just install it on the API level. And the only thing you need to change in your code, if you don't want to modify it in any way, is go to either here on the app level and say use Delta if you want to apply it everywhere, or go here on the group level and say use Delta and only apply it for a certain group of endpoints that you want to have this efficient mechanism. So I'm going to add this here. But in order for this to work and because of how Delta is working, I have to go to the database and I have to add a new column. So I'm going to say a new column and I'm going to name that column row version. And it's going to be of type row version, which is actually going to be a timestamp. So I'm going to say, okay, I'm going to let Rider do its thing. And as you can see now, we have this column over here. And if I click on users, what you're going to see now on this column is this sort of auto incrementing looking value. And that's where the magic comes in, because you see this value will change for any data that is changing on the database, because ultimately how we're going to be improving the performance is through caching, but it's caching on the browser level, because we're going to be utilizing E tags or entity tags, as well as the 304 mechanism that the browser has to know if data is modified. And this is only a few of the things that we teach on Dome Train on courses like Antiframe or Core, or any of our other courses dealing with databases. And actually, until the 2nd of December, we have a Black Friday sale, so you can use discount code Black Friday 24 to get 40% off any course, any bundle, as well as your first year of Dome Train Pro. Link in the description, we just launched the massive 17-hour course called Let's Build It, showing you tons of things, including database, provisioning resources, bicep, tons of great stuff. Link in the description down below. But now that we have this raw version, I'm going to close that. 
I can now go here and change nothing else, run my API, and then the UI is still running. So I'm going to go back here and now I'm going to refresh the page. First request will take some time. In this case, it took 1.3 seconds, so quite a long time. I'm going to refresh again and I want you to see this is a 200 GET request, right? Now, if I refresh the page, this took 27 milliseconds, but it is not a 200 request. This is a 304 request and it was, as you can see over here, cached on the browser. That's because the server said that basically nothing was modified. How does this work? If we click here, you can see that now the response headers also return a cache control no cache as well as an e tag signifying that this is ultimately the version of my data. That's why we added that row version column because a lot of that logic using Delta is calculated through that. Now, if I go in the database over here and I load that data and I modify anything, so this hypothetically is a read heavy scenario, but not so much a write heavy scenario. That's the best use case scenario for this. Then if I say Kelly three to Kelly two and I update this and I go back to Firefox, and this took some time to update, I go back to Firefox and I close this over here, then what you're going to see when I refresh is that this request will take again a second. And now it is cached again. And now it's three milliseconds, two milliseconds, two milliseconds, extremely, extremely efficient. This is because the 304, the this is my e tag, will have a mismatch with what the browser has, meaning, hey, the data has changed. So I actually have to properly get that data back from the server. The way this works behind the scenes is genius. Ultimately, what Delta is doing is it's hijacking the SQL connection. And this also works with transactions as well, by the way, there's great documentation of the project. And ultimately, it's hijacking the connection and it's doing a query, just a single, very simple query on the row version column. And it's checking, okay, is this still the latest version? If not, then I'm going to call for the real data. So there is still a single database query per request but it's way more efficient than anything your store procedures or code would be doing, especially for an inefficient request like the one I have here. Now, the great thing about Delta is you can actually heavily customize this behavior. For example, if you don't want to have it on the group and you want to do it conventionally, what you can say is app.useDelta. And then in here, you can have the should execute method where you get the context and you say context.request.path.toString.com contains, and let's say I want to do it just for the users. If this contains the user's path in its path, then trigger this logic. So you can do it like this. In fact, this is a fully open source project made by Simon Crop, incredible developer. He's made tons of great, great stuff and expect more videos like this. You can see how the logic works in this mermaid diagram. You can see how the time is calculated and what configuration you might need to do on your server. And as you can see, the solution also has an entity framework alternative. So you can have the exact same thing with EF Core. I highly, highly recommend you give it a star on GitHub. It is an excellent Nougat package. I'm personally using it right now. And it is just amazing. The performance by just doing simple caching on something that's so efficient is just unmatched. And it's such an ingenious way of using the browser to drive that caching. Now you might think, yeah, okay, but what if I'm calling the API using an HTTP client? Well, I got you covered because Simon has also made Replicant, which is an HTTP client wrapper that implements the exact same logic and it caches on disk. So you can match the two projects with the E tag, no cache, last modified, and you can have the exact same behavior on a server side approach. Great, incredible package. Highly recommend to everyone. I think more people should be using this. But now I wonder from you, what do you think about this? And have you used something similar? Leave a comment down below. Let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.